Welcome to Quick and Early Miracles. Today I will be talking about unhiding. And that would be about, that's gonna be about, where you think that something is bad or wrong about you or maybe you did some shit you think was stupid or, or, or you feel you're not good enough or worthy or no one will understand you. And, and this is your invitation not that you need one, but if you were waiting for one, here's your invitation to unhide. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about what happens when you do that. So as you know, or may know, I've been in the behavior change business for a minute since I started coaching people somewhere in 2013. And it seems like and we generally think that it's like, what you need to do to get yourself or somebody else to do something different is push, make somebody feel really bad, make yourself feel really bad, you know, talk about it all. And I have systems to support it and plans and all these things. And, you know, sometimes that works for a little bit, but if it really worked, wouldn't everybody be doing everything they wanted? And so what I actually found in this, corresponds to you know law of attraction type stuff and you know truth of who we are stuff it's it's not it's just loving yourself if you can love yourself you can do anything and so I have transitioned self-help to self-hug because if you can get in that state then the things that you want to do that are actually good for you are natural expressions from there so one of the big barriers to self-hug is some kind of shame or guilt, which means that you've looked at what you've done behind you or what you're doing now and you think like, no, I'm not good enough. This isn't right. I messed up. I'm not a la 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 la. And you reject yourself. Perhaps it's in response to one decision. Perhaps you don't even know you're doing it. And this, um, I showed the other day in the David Hawkins book, his map of consciousness, where he puts shame and guilt at the very bottom. That's the lowest thing that you can feel because it's the exact opposite of, like in my interpretation, of who you are, which is God. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So one way to start to, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, allow for yourself to unhide and let those like darker parker parts out to heal is to see it ain't you so this is one way i teach um god consciousness so i have this vehicle here and the vehicle is uh, let me see if i can do something right now hold on no but i can remember hold on one second i gotta take a shoot there we go um, one way is one way to remember or one way to work with like the remembering of who you are is to separate your attributes, your characteristics, your personal past from who you are. They're more like things that you drive around. So in this vehicle, I have a sunspot in the driver's seat and that's God. God is driving all of us, all of us life, i.e. like this universe spirit etc is expressing through all things all things all things there is nothing that is not and sometimes when you land you know in this experience or this version of it you have things with your car that maybe you're not that huge of a fan with a fan of maybe there is a programming issue and every time you try to drive to the right you drive to the left or Maybe one of the tires is jacked up or, you know, maybe there, maybe your car <clears throat> isn't as pretty excuse me, as the other cars. And yet like you're, everybody's equal. Everybody is equal. And that's to say that you can start to separate or envision separating yourself from these ideas you have about what's wrong with you or why you're not right, because it's not you you're the driver not the vehicle and so when you see that then it makes it a little bit more comfortable to get out of the car take a walk around and say like all right look if i want this car to be on the road i'm gonna need to do something about the wheels i'd like this to be this way like 
you're not the thing. And from what I can tell, you know, it, the light of your awareness will really move most things. So this is building on what I was talking about the other day, where you're either saying like, I know who I am, or I like, no, I'm not that. Knowing who you are is lining up with that life force. It's letting it in. And here's my model of change for that. One is giggle, hee hee. Because, you know, all these places and things that we hide from ourselves and others, we only think that we're hiding. You can't hide shit. Everything shows up one way or the other. And so just giggle because what you thought you were doing, you weren't doing. The next one is to allow yourself to see it as an eyeball. And this does not mean that you see it and you write a jillion stories about why this had to be or how this came to be. Like, I have so much momentum in my head sometimes where it's taken, it's taken a couple years for me to like roll it back so that I'm not looking for the explanation so that I can understand, so that I can control. All you gotta do is see it. After that, I have some leather. So once you see it, you might feel some type of way. Again, you don't need to think some type of way, but you might feel some type of way. For example, um, one of the things I unpacked kind of recently in a deeper way is that I didn't have to suffer the way that I suffered. So for me to allow for growth without suffering, I kind of had to see that. And at the same time, I was like, Man, you know, like, oh, what was lost, what was lost. Only what I thought was lost, nevertheless. Like, my body or being felt some type of way. So, you know, you let your, you let the rain come. And there's a sun there, too, because maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't. Not, like, maybe it doesn't. And then that's okay, too. And then the last one is onward. So, you know, some of these bigger change initiatives, like, when you take them on... It seems like, oh, it'll be forever. Okay, okay. But it also allows for you to get onward, you know, in a better or more comfortable way when you're ready. And when I say better, it's not like it's better in a way that the current way is wrong. It's just that you, it feels more allowing of growth. It's sort of like when something, you know, I've been talking about plants growing recently. It's like the plant's trying to break through. Like if you let it grow, it'll grow. A lot of the ways that we hide ourselves and deny our growth feel uncomfortable because they're unnatural. So it's not necessarily that something's better, like the way that you're doing it is wrong. It's just it feels more natural to allow it. And even then, like you could argue that it's not not. We love the cosmic giggle. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> IMHO, you got to. The seventh sense. Um. Okay, so today I was talking about, and I could probably do this a different, I um, will likely cover this in another way at another time, because it's a really important topic. When you are denying of yourself, you're rejecting yourself in some way, shape, or form, and it could be unconscious, and that's why it's so helpful, <clears throat> excuse me, to read the world around you so you can say like, what must I believe to be true that this is the experience that I'm having? Oh, I'm having a hard time with relationships or money or my health or whatever. So it's like, you might not see the belief, but you can see it reflected back to you. There's something, if there's not harmony in the world around you, it's generally some, you know, you can back up into what you must believe or expect or something inside of you to, to cor not correct it, but to, to remove the distortion. And the other way was like, you know, work with people because they can see things you can't see. A lot of the stuff that we're looking at is where you are unable to help yourself because you're, the help yourself stuff is what is under, is, is what is being updated. And in any case, in any case, and this is like the blessing of it all, you don't need to know. You don't even need to know. So all of that is to satisfy you at an intellectual level, but you don't even need to know. All you need to do is to practice accepting and loving yourself no matter what's happening. And that looks like 
soothing. So let me make that line through help bigger. It looks like soothing yourself whenever you're upset or it looks like changing the narrative inside when you're like, oh, I fucked that up. I should have done that better or different. I hope they don't see this. It's watching that inner dialogue, that inner narrator and just saying, it's okay, man. It's okay. This is the only destination. And sometimes you think you can get there by making stuff on the outside better or making other people understand or oh, love you. There's no, this is it. This is the whole place where you're standing and, you know, acceptance and love of yourself. That's it. We make it conditional. Oh, if I'm healed here, if I'm skinny enough there, if I have this attached, you know, achievement, etc. But all you're really looking for is that level of acceptance and allowance of who you are and what's in your heart. Isn't that cute? So that's it for today. If anybody has any questions, thoughts, feelings, comments, etc., I'm going to roll back through. This is uh, our list for today. How to approach if you how to approach things you think that you're hiding out of guilt or shame. One laugh because you really aren't hiding it. Everybody could see you. Isn't that cute? to allow yourself to really see it see it without thinking you have to explain it or understand it or 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 like trace it back to the beginning of the time or tell stories about your mom or dad like you can i did but you don't need to three is allow for whether you might feel some type of way about it even though you're not thinking about it in which case like cry if you gotta cry yell if you gotta yell but also don't take it on to like explain or think about those things either and then i also put a sun because maybe you don't have that and then the last one is onward because like go ahead go on so that's my presentation for today on um allowing for yourself to unhide which means that you see and accept where you are denying yourself because of guilt or shame you're thinking something's bad or wrong with you or could be better or different and you don't allow for who you are you don't you forget that you've always been god you forget that you can't be your you're not your errors and you allow that the true driver the true driver to take the wheel and rather than explain or correct or fix yourself you just hug yourself and you do that by noticing whenever your inner dialogue is uh is kind of mean or scary you develop a practice of mindfulness and you hear thoughts that maybe you wouldn't have heard before they just would kind of run in the background and then when you hear the thought you wicka, 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 up, uh, 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 interrupt it and just say like it's okay you're okay breathe all right that's it for today any other thoughts comments questions feelings etc the last thing i am selling um i created these divination cards and they are really fun ways to invite new perspectives into your experience and you can get them on my website i also work with people one-on-one -on -one to help them through this process so it seems like the area to like uh, like unstick your or the recipe to unstick yourself is the same in every area of your life but in some areas of our lives they see it seems like it could or should be more complex and also we're really we can hold on more tightly to certain illusions than others. Oh, but I need to have this relationship. Oh, but I'm not going to be that professionally or whatever it is. And holding on to that illusion is the same as like denying of yourself because you're saying like, I need that to feel and like you don't. <laughs> okay. That's it for today. Thanks everybody for coming. Love you. Bye.